Dave, what is your response to the allegations that have emerged over the last uh, few hours about um, alleged corruption and links to organised crime within the CFMEU? I think the first thing to say is that the, uh, I'm very confident the overwhelming majority uh, of officials, uh, delegates, shop stewards and members of uh, our union are hard-working, honest people who work in a, in a pretty high-risk, insecure industry and they expect the union uh, to have their interests for, at, at the forefront at all times. And that's where we come from in all of this. In respect of the allegations that have been put, um, we will uh, obviously, we take them seriously. Um, any allegations of criminality uh, ought to immediately be uh, provided uh, to the uh, Victoria or New South Wales Police, the appropriate authorities, uh, and those bodies should investigate them. Uh, and I today will be writing to the Commissioner of the New South Wales and Victoria Police Forces asking them uh, to uh, investigate all matters that have been raised and any other matters relating to corruption or criminality in the industry and assuring them of the union's full cooperation in any such investigation. Uh, one union official, uh, Danny Barati, has been, and the CFME has confirmed, has been sacked or he resigned this week after uh, evidence was presented concerning his relationship to um, labour hire companies. Will, will the uh, union provide any evidence they have to Victoria Police given that there's a potential that a, a crime has been committed there? Well, uh, there will be full cooperation with Victoria Police in respect of any matter, uh, including that matter. Um, uh, union official Brian Fitzpatrick in New South Wales uh, raised uh, concerns that he had over the relationship between CFME figures and George Alex in New South Wales. Um, he's gone on record as saying that um, he received death threats from Darren Greenfield, a CFMEU official in New South Wales. Are you aware of that? I'm aware that an allegation was made uh, by Mr Fitzpatrick at the time that he was employed with the union uh, regarding another officer of the union. Uh, that allegation uh, was investigated and statements were taken from both of the individuals concerned in a phone call at that time. Uh, the other individual, Mr Greenfield, engaged in that conversation, strongly uh, denied uh, the allegation of Mr Fitzpatrick. Um, and in that context, um, you've got one person's word against the other. Um, and uh, what happened uh, as out of that was that both officials were issued with the union's code of conduct. Uh, both officials were reminded of their responsibilities. But based on one person's word against the other, it is not possible for the union um, to take the extreme action of dismissing an official. Is uh, the, alleged, um, uh, the alleged response to Brian Fitzpatrick raising his concerns, would that not give some people pause, to thought, uh, pause for thought um, when it, you know, bringing forward allegations of their own? Uh, well, absolutely not. And uh, we're confident that that matter was handled appropriately. You put yourself in the situation of any organisation where you've got two uh, employees of the organisation um, one person says something happened in a conversation on a telephone, the other says it didn't. Um, really, you know, um, to have taken action and, and, and as I assume is being, you know, advocated, uh, terminate someone's employment based on that, it would not stand up legally. It was strongly denied by the individual concerned um, and uh, faced with one person's word against the other, uh, the union believed the appropriate thing to do was to remind both officers of, officers of their responsibility under the rules and their conduct uh, and to move on. Um, Mr Fitzpatrick and another uh, senior union official in New South Wales have raised concerns about re relationships between um, CFMU and George Alex in particular with regards to the Barangaroo um, project. Do you uh, believe or accept that any influence was exerted to get George Alex work on the Barangaroo project by CFMU officials? Well you've mentioned Mr Fitzpatrick, uh, which other senior official has made that allegation and what's the precise nature of the allegation? Uh, I believe there was a letter sent to the Executive of New South Wales um, by uh, Andrew Quirk um, okay. raising concerns about this. Is that, is that the case? Well the correct position is that Mr Quirk uh, sent a letter to uh, the National Secretary of the CFMEU, Mr O'Connor, and the National President, Mr Ma. Um, that uh, resulted in a process where Mr uh, Quirk uh, had discussions with those people um, and a process has been established under the uh, auspices of the National Office of the Union involving an independent barrister uh, to test the veracity and seriousness of those allegations. Um, uh, Mr Quirk has remained in his employment um, and uh, uh, has, uh, to my knowledge, consented to the nature of that investigation. I should also say Mr Quirk was advised to take any concerns he had to the New South Wales Police immediately 
uh, by myself uh, when this uh, issue arose and he declined to do so. But the investigation is ongoing. It will be thorough, it will be transparent uh, and uh, it will uh, uh, clear up any issues. Um, and I say again, if uh, Mr Quirk or anybody else have allegations of, uh, that they believe of criminality or corruption or indeed Fairfax newspapers, they should take them to the police and their union will cooperate with any investigation. Um, the union in New South Wales has, I believe, certified or an EBA, <coughs> EBA with George Alex's labour hire company up, up there. Um, is that not risky given that George Alex's background has been widely canvassed and people are fully aware of uh, his links to, to crime figures and also um, his record with companies of his own um, basically folding and then re-emerging as Phoenix companies as they're called? Um, would that not give you pause for thought uh, as far as the EBAs and Mr Alex's companies are concerned? Well, um, the process of entering EBA, what an EBA does, an enterprise agreement, is it, it sets wages and conditions for workers. And my understanding is that uh, active labour hire employ people in the industry. It is the job of the union uh, to negotiate wages and conditions for workers. Now, we don't have character references for every employer that we deal with in the building industry. Um, in respect of uh, Mr uh, Alex or his company, or active labour hire, I should say, um, and uh, their record of uh, compliance with uh, statutory and uh, agreement obligations. The union has been working very hard, senior officials of the union, uh, to recover unpaid entitlements for workers. And I understand that uh, as recently as last week, we've recovered uh, in excess of $200,000 of underpayments from that company. That's our bread and butter. That's what unions do. Um, and nobody uh, will get any favours from our union uh, when it comes to um, uh, ripping off our members. No employer will get that. Um, our job is to ensure our members uh, are safe on the job, that they get their wages and conditions. It's not our job uh, to, uh, if you like, conduct a character test uh, of every employer in the industry. Otherwise, uh, whilst most of the vast majority of employers in the industry are reputable and decent people, there are quite a few that would face, that would, would fail, in my view, any character test. Um, as a rule, would it even if there are uh, not proven business ties or whatever, as a rule, would you say that it's unwise for um, officials in any union, CFMU amongst them, to socialise or have any relationships with figures who are recognised criminal figures? Um, well, I, I think my job is to make sure that the rules of the union are carried out and the union operates in an effective and responsible way. Um, I think socialising uh, with people uh, who are criminal figures is a bad look for the union. Uh, but uh, what people do outside of their working time um, is not something that I have uh, control of as the National Secretary of the Union and nor the governing bodies of the union. But if there's any hint of corruption or impropriety or favourable treatment going to any employer in the industry, the union will deal with it. That wasn't a trick question or anything. That was, I was saying, yeah, just no, no. as a general rule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, sorry, you said you, today you're going to write to the, the um, two commissioners of the two police forces. Um, what are you expecting to happen after, after that? Well, I would hope that any material that Fairfax Media's got, uh, or indeed the ABC's got, or anyone else has got that points to um, credible evidence of corruption is provided to the police. Um, that's what should happen. Now, I note uh, that uh, Senator Abetz and... Uh, 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 other, other figures, and I expect it will happen more, have uh, taken the opportunity of the uh, story in relation to uh, allegations of criminal, criminality in construction in, uh, and corruption in the construction industry. I might say that again, is that alright? Of course, yeah. Um, I note uh, that Senator Abetz uh, and other uh, uh, conservative figures uh, have taken uh, these allegations as an opportunity to call for the reinstitution of the Australian Building and Construction Commission. Now, quite frankly, the ABCC, um, as Senator Abetz well knows, has no power uh, to deal with corruption uh, or criminality. It's an industrial relations regulator. It was created as part of the work choices regime uh, in order to reduce construction workers' rights, wages and conditions. And I think it's very uh, of great concern to me that the minister, who as a lawyer knows the legal position in this, would take such a political opportunity. Um, Corruption, criminality are serious matters. They shouldn't be treated as political sport by politicians or by anybody else. Um, and uh, the fact that this is now being morphed into an ABCC debate, 
ought to be of concern and people ought to have their bullshit detectors finally attuned on this matter. One last one. Um, you've said the unions uh, launched an investigation internally in uh, Sydney into um, uh, the um, George Alex uh, issue and, and Barangaroo. Um, would you consider a similar investigation down here in Victoria, considering some of the allegations are similar in, the, uh, in that they uh, refer to labour hire companies and, um, and influence being, being applied to get contracts for those companies? Well, the, the, the investigation um, which has been carried out by the national body of the union, not by the New South Wales branch, uh, in conjunction with an independent barrister, um, was occasioned by a, a written series of uh, concerns that were put by an officer of the union, and those concerns um, uh, will be dealt with in that process. Um, now, um, any al allegations of criminality need to be dealt with by the police. Uh, the union can't and shouldn't and won't uh, be an investigator in respect of alleged criminal conduct anywhere in the industry. Uh, that's the police's job and it's important they do it. When it comes to the rules of the union, when it comes to the proper conduct of officials and when it comes to the effective discharge of their duties, the union uh, will be rigorous in ensuring uh, that that occurs. Um, now, so far, um, we understand that the approach of the Fairfax media and the ABC will be to uh, drag uh, out a series of um, allegations over about four days. Um, that's all about selling newspapers. We understand that. That's the media business. Um, but it's a serious matter. And if there is any al uh, allegations of criminal behaviour, of corruption, of violence, or any of those other things we've heard this morning, the challenge uh, to Fairfax uh, to anyone else that has credible evidence of those things is to take it to the police. Let the cards fall where they, might, where they may. The union will not turn a blind eye to corruption. Okay. Thank you. Well. <clears throat>